Hello and welcome back. That is right. Thunderbolt 5 is now a thing. We've heard about it for a little while. There were lots of little blibs and blobs from Intel alongside partner events about USB 4. But now they've done a full presentation alongside information on their YouTube channel talking about what Thunderbolt 5 is going to be capable of. And certainly within reference to the likes of Thunderbolt 4, what the advantages are going to be. Because let's be honest, I think now we can kind of look over our shoulder a little bit, little bit over the last two to three years and go... Thunderbolt 4 did not exactly kick off the way Intel would have liked. Alongside uh, issues uh, they had of availability and, of course, uh, pretty much landing what they were hoping to be the commercial sector um, during the pandemic. It really did limit a lot of things about Thunderbolt 4 when it rolled out. You know, we can go straight to the technical level and talk about the shortages of certain components down to power delivery that were made Intel have to change a lot of their hard rules on Thunderbolt 4 and uh, USB compatibility alongside that client um, kind of utilization of Thunderbolt 4 really took a nosedive compared with that of Thunderbolt 3 that came before it. One of the big issues being for a lot of, you know, slightly less uh, conventional users being um, the perform there's no performance in upgrade of a Thunderbolt 3 and all the benefits of Thunderbolt 4 were very much to do with latency and kind of in cable stuff and not really the traditional performance numbers we are used to. Now in Thunderbolt 5 Intel have pretty much gone back to the way what people want and what they want to hear from this. The big of course the big shout about it right now Thunderbolt 5 is going to be base level 80 gigabits per second bandwidth there. Now, Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4, all of which using very, very similar cables, although Thunderbolt 4 had its own cables, as does Thunderbolt 5, uh, were reported at a maximum bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second, so double that. But it doesn't stop there, because on top of that, there is a bandwidth boosting mode that's being discussed that is going to provide users, and again, they really, really targeted quite heavily on gamers. Personally, I would have gone towards the content creative sector. Uh, they were going, uh, you can add Add an additional 40 gigabits per second to that initial 80 gigabits per second with bandwidth boosting to give you that total of 120 gigabits per second. Now bear in mind we are still talking about total bandwidth. It doesn't guarantee those speeds unless you're using stuff inside from monitors to storage adapters to PCIe cards and more to fill it. What we're talking about here is a number of different lanes across the motorway but it's up to you to start filling those roads. Now when they were talking about USB support, they're talking about, of course, it's going to be supporting USB 4, but more importantly, USB 4 version 2, where we are talking now and now more about an 80 gigabit USB connection as well. And these are, of course, going to be developed in parity and utilizing USB 4 as well. Now, when we look at Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 5, there's a lot we can take away. So, obviously, there's that initial increase in bandwidth that everyone's going to be hyping about. Again, whether you've got the ability to fill it up is going to be another question. Uh, of uh, one, 80, uh, sorry, uh, 40 gigabits per second on Thunderbolt 4 to that 80 to 120 gigabit. But on top of that, they went into a little bit more information, uh, a little more detail about the PCIe uh, architecture of it. And for those of you that are going to be using multi adapted um, visual output. So, for example, Thunderbolt 4 right now supports at maximum two 4K monitors at 60 hertz. Uh, Thunderbolt 5 is going to be supported multiple keyword they said there multiple 8k uh, monitors maximum of course that will filter down to more 4ks and even more hds uh, and uh, uh, maximum three uh, 144 hertz monitors output there again we've got support of the full range of usb connections as well which is pretty darn good in terms of pci um, support again across those lanes. Um, Thunderbolt 4 was geared at 32 gigabits per second um, total bandwidth there to play with, so that's comparable to Gen 3 times 32. And the new Thunderbolt 5 is going to be rocking out at 64 gigabits per second there. So again, that's Gen 4 times 32 comparable um, overall. So in terms of their architecture, clearly with Thunderbolt 5, they've you know kind of realized that bandwidth is going to be key here, particularly for those users that are going to be capitalizing on that bandwidth boosting as well, when they're going to be kind of slinging out a graphics card there across a multiple high def monitor set up there, spread across, or even one of those larger, wider monitors. But what about when it comes to power? 
because one of the main issues that Thunderbolt 4 was encountering, as I mentioned earlier on in this video, was shortages of power delivery, those PD components there. And of course, as we've seen from Thunderbolt 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 and now 5, not only has power output to power all of your devices increased, but the power draw has increased as well. And that's why we saw a lot of Thunderbolt 4 devices rocking out with giant external power adapters. And only now, in the last 8 to 12 months, we've started seeing Thunderbolt 4 docking stations with internal PSUs due to that increased efficiency. Again, Still big block PSUs out there. The Thunderbolt 4, um, it required a 100 watt power delivery and output 140. In the case of Thunderbolt 5, I'm pleased to say it's 140, which is a bit hungry as an input, but as an output up to 240 watts, which is going to, again, be paramount when you've got this enormous um, range of bandwidth to play with then you can have multiple devices running through, some of which, of course, are going to be Thunderbolt powered. Now, the reason I've got this cable on the table is another thing we've noticed with each iteration of Thunderbolt to maintain uh, and have that sustained performance level, which once again, if you're going to monitors in particular, it's going to need to maintain that high delivery of bitrate. Cables have seemingly got shorter with every uh, generation of Thunderbolt. And in the case of Thunderbolt 5, they are saying that at, at launch, you won't be able to get higher than two meters of cable, which again, once you've talking about all these peripherals, that's actually quite closed in uh, when you really factor in with cable hiding and trunking. Now, Thunderbolt 4 had pretty much the same thing. It was only really towards the last 12 to 18 months that we've started seeing slightly longer cables come out. And those cables are frighteningly expensive i think the apple um thunderbolt for three meter cable is like 180 to 200 quid for a cable which is insanity and once you factor that into production of a lot of devices that are going to be rolling out with thunderbolt 4 connectivity and thunderbolt 5 connectivity in the future cable costs are really rising at the manufacturing level now as i said at the beginning this is so far in the distance thunderbolt 5 that you really don't have to lose any sleep over it thunderbolt 4 right now is finally starting to take hold and we're starting to see it on more and more devices and for those of you that didn't want to wait or looked at the rising cost because of those shortages of hardware and went straight to Thunderbolt 3, you're fine as well. So I wouldn't even consider Thunderbolt 5 to be a reason to hold off making a big purchase because really, in terms of availability and application and integration in hardware, we're still looking at at least two years for anything even approaching reasonable. But this has been Thunderbolt 5 and the first reveal, the first real meaningful formal reveal by Intel. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like subscribe use the free advice section if you're uh, looking for a thunderbolt related setup for your storage for editing or more there's guides linked in the description apart from that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time